talking about Natalie's death? Does she think this is the real Euron Vandersloot? And does she think he's telling the truth? And later, we track down the man Euron says threw Natalie's body overboard. What does he have to say? He goes on the record. Sunday. We now get an inside look in what may be giving Natalie's parents their last hope to find their daughter. Several groups, including underwater expeditions, marine surveys, and Texas EquiSearch, are helping Natalie's parents search the ocean floor. The boat, called The Persistence, is searching the waters off the coast of Aruba. On the record, producer Tim Silfies got an inside look at the search. Let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing out on the boat today. Who are you uh, looking for, what are you looking for, and what's the process? Today's mission is to go out and pick up where we had left off. The weather has really slowed us down somewhat. We're out in the deeper water of the second grid, the extended grid area. We're making sonar runs, taking pictures of the bottoms, trying to build a mosaic and identify all the, the unnatural features that are on the seafloor. The ultimate goal is we are looking for human remains, correct? Ultimately, that's what we expect. After two and a half years, we expect to find the skeletal structure and, and maybe possibly some other clothing or anything that may have been uh, trapped and hasn't, hasn't wasted away. And this is specifically a search for Natalie Holloway? Specifically for Natalie. That's okay. exactly why we're here. The survey site is on the northwest side of Aruba. It's about 67 square miles, which is three times the size of Manhattan and about 80% of the size of the island itself. The survey ranges from about 60 feet of water near shore to over 1,100 feet offshore, about 10 miles. The survey was picked to go directly offshore from the fishermen's hut center, and you know, the, and most of our efforts were focused directly offshore the fishermen's huts in the north. The sonar is capable of picking up features as small as a baseball. So anything larger than a coffee can, we will find. So we, in the beginning, we were looking for a needle in a field of haystacks. But we have a fantastic needle detector and a crew who's used to searching for needles. And that field of haystacks is getting much smaller. Captain, can you tell us again where we are right now? We're off the western middle half of the island of Aruba. We're heading north toward our survey area, about six miles away. What landmass is straight ahead from us? Uh, right now we're heading almost north, so that would be uh, uh, Haiti and uh, Dominican Republic and then uh, Florida. And then over here? To the west would be the Panama Canal. I expect it to be pretty rough today out there? I believe so. Our uh, wind speed is 20 knots right now, and we're still in the protected side of the island. So what they're doing now is they've just deployed the sonar fish. They got it into the water. It's riding right behind the stern of the boat. So basically, they're putting the beacon down there. It's going to comb the floor, comb the area, see if there's any objects down there. And if you hit, if you find something, then you'll send something else back down to the sea. Right, what we're going to do, once the cable is completely deployed, the boat's going to turn towards line. We've got these lines calculated. Every 50 meters, we run a line. These lines are about, in this area, about six miles long. The fish looks out 50 meters on each side of the fish, so it creates a swath. We bring that data in, process it, feed it into the, the mosaic, the big picture. Each one of these swaths are looked at and reviewed what's there for a target. When we identify targets that we feel are of potential value, we put into a database. When we get done doing the sonar work, we'll bring the ROV crews on board and we'll lo lower the ROV at every one of these targets and it'll go down with its camera and take pictures, take video of what these targets are. We were talking earlier about the way your search has changed since, or at least the location since uh, the new information on this on this this tape, this hidden camera tape of Yaron Vendersloot that was made. Now the information on that tape was, was a statement made possibly about something about two kilometers offshore. Well, technically, the first grid area that we surveyed. The absolute first line is about 2.1 kilometers from the shore. So based on that tape, we're actually going to run a few more survey lines inshore once we determine what the water depths are in there, because we know it's, it's very shallow. And then we'll bring the boat in there 
picked that up to about one and a half kilometers. There was an interesting statement made on the tape by Yorn where he referred to slipping the body into the water. So there's, that's been evaluated by, I guess, quite a few people, but basically the final interpretation is if he talked about just throwing the body overboard as it was placed in no type of container, then you would refer to it as rolling the body into the water because that's what it would take to move uh, a body is to roll it over to get it over the side of the floor. The statement made was slipping it into the water as in slipping a container, a trap, a, any one of a, a hundred different things they could have used. So the belief is still there that this was what was used to dispose of the body. Again, there's been no statement yet that we're aware of as to exactly how the body was disposed of. So now after an afternoon at sea, uh, we are on our way back to Aruba. You showed us the, uh, the whole process of um, using sonar to look at what was under various parts of the ocean. Why don't you tell us from now what's, what's going to happen, what you guys are going to do? Well, the next step will be to process the data that we acquired, look for individual targets, uh, evaluate the targets, what may be potentially what we're looking at, looking for, and add that to the target list in preparation for the ROV dives. Okay, so now give me a sense of how many targets you have at this point. Currently we have about 175 targets, which I'm sure will pare down a little bit, but we're going to be right around 150 when we get ready to start diving. And those fit the criteria of what you think could be what you're looking for. Exactly. They are unnatural, man-made, of sufficient size, it's of something that could have been launched by one or two people. I want to talk a little bit about when when you arrived and what kind of what your schedule has been like since you've been here. We arrived, the vessel arrived on the 15th of December. Uh, the original plan was to run two 12-hour shifts and just run around the clock. However, with the bottom being as treacherous as it is and it requires multiple people operating the sonar, multiple people on navigation, we broke this into one shift, 18 hours a day. The boat comes in at night, heads back out six hours later, and we've been pushing this seven days a week. Coming up, what's next for Yaron Vandersloot? And is the mystery of what happened to Natalie Holloway now solved? Stay tuned.